we have Rhonda Miller here from Utah State University and she's going to tell us about nutrient leaching under manure staging areas. Thank you, Leslie. Okay, so today, as Leslie mentioned, I'm gonna talk about a study that we did looking at the leachate under manure staging piles. This is an approved NRCS practice to have manure staging piles. So you're probably wondering why we were worried about that or wanted to look at it. Okay, thanks. Um, and so it actually started as part of another study. So what we did, we actually had in Utah, we, um, Circle 4, a large swine producer, wanted to, had sludge that they wanted to dry. Well, you can't dry sludge because it's considered a liquid waste and they were concerned about that potentially contaminating the groundwater. And so Utah has an extremely dry climate and so I wanted to do a study to look at how much leachate we had underneath the sludge. And so we compared that to a manure staging pile placed at the same time in July. And then we also did that fall, we put it, started a study looking at the, manure, the leachate under manure staging piles that are placed in November, January, and March. And for all of those, we placed them at the end of the month, so it was the end of November, end of January, end of March, is when we placed the manure out in those piles. We then also looked at two different types of manure, so basically dairy manure with straw and dairy manure without straw. And so ultimately we wanted to see how the sludge drying and the leachate produced from that compared to leachate from manure staging piles that would have been placed during the winter months, which would be an improved, an improved practice. Um, oh. Let me back up. So one thing, we ended up, the results were somewhat intriguing to me. Um, we found actually that we had very little leachate coming out from the sludge drying piles. And so we wanted to see if they would, the manure staging piles would also seal off essentially like the sludge drying did. So we continued that for two more years in addition to years. So as I mentioned, Utah has an extremely dry climate. We get about 14 to 17 inches of rain at Cache Junction, it's up in the way northern part of Utah, the little panhandle part. It's on the west side of the valley. And so it's we have an extremely dry climate. Things dry out. So just for most of you, if you have bananas on your counter and they kind of become really slimy and gross if you let them sit there very long, in Utah they just kind of shrivel up and dry. Okay? It's a, it's a totally different concept. So it's... I know we're somewhat unique in that way. Most of our precipitation comes as snow, not rain. And so we get very little precipitation, almost none during the summer months. We never plan for a rain date. Most of it comes in the sn a snow. And then what we really see from other studies I've conducted looking at leachate, we get flushes of nitrates moving through with the snow melt early in the spring as that snow melts. And other than that, we don't have enough rainfall generally to have much leachate. Um, the soil type here at Cash Junction is a silty clay loam. It's highly calcareous and the pH is about 7.8. In Utah, most of our pH is very high, so it runs from like 7.5 to the low 8.3 or so. So we're, we're always dealing with alkaline soils, not acidic soils. As I mentioned before, we had our um, placement to six treatments. We had placed them in November, January, and March. We had straw and no straw for each of those. And for each of these, we had a manure staging pile of, of an area about 40 foot by 40 foot. And then to collect the leachate, we actually created little um, zero tension lysimeters, little mini ones. So those are placed pretty much in the middle of the pile, one direction, and then true dead center and then about 10 feet off each side under each pile and then those are connected with PEX tubing. So these little isometers are a scaled down version of a larger zero tension isometer we've put in before. Um, it's made with PVC pipe. In this case we have stainless, expanded stainless steel, grates two layers of that on top. We have weed fabric on top of that and then there's a collection reservoir and we have PEX tubing. So total, the PEX tubing was running about three foot below the soil surface off to the edges of the manure staging piles. From there we could go put, haul out a generator, a vacuum pump, and be able to suck out that leachate. 
the actual lysimeter, the mini lysimeters themselves were it's a six inch diameter PVC pipe that we used. So we had three of those per, per pile. We collected the leachate bi-weekly as possible. So again, we're in a very dry climate. So once we get to the spring and it quits raining, there's, there's nothing. You can go out there, but there's not gonna be anything. So until we get rain again, once they're dry, there's no point in going out during the summer. Um, we, in the fall, you know, as it started to rain at all, we would go out, check them, and we would collect the leachate as late into the winter as we could. So usually once we start getting snow on the ground, then it becomes too difficult to get out there. So we would have to stop but the little lysimeters will collect any leachate that goes through and hold it till the, the spring. We took soil samples before we started the steady baseline ones, and then each fall after we removed the manure. Typically the manure is removed in late summer or early fall to be applied, and so, and we also took manure samples at the time of placement, whenever we hauled that manure out to the manure staging pile, and then when we removed it for land application, we sampled the manure. The leachate, we actually collected volume, we analyzed it for ammonium, nitrate, and dissolved phosphorus, all on a latchet flow injection analyzer with those methods. Um, this is us putting the lice, digging the trenches for the lysimeters. It's great soil, not, it's really hard. <laughs> if it's dry, it's like rock. And so initially when we went out to put them in, it was dry because it was in a non-irrigated portion of the field. And so my student workers were taking pickaxes and slamming it down and being able to get down about a quarter of an inch. We ended up hauling out water and then we fortunately got some rains and so that made it much better. So if we could get some rain, we could get down a little further. But putting them in was not exactly fun for us. Um, volume wise for the leachate, this actually kind of surprised me, but we got very, very little leachate out of our November placed piles. I actually would have thought we would have seen more, but we didn't. We got a fair amount in the January piles and the March piles. And the one thing to note is that the no straw piles typically almost always had more leachate than the straw piles. That was just, and I think the straw is just helping absorb, absorb and hold that moisture, which makes sense. Well, huh? dairy or it's dairy manure. Mm -hmm. So one was from the Thai stall barn where we had a lot of straw with it. The other was from um, our butterfly sheds. They were a flushed system, which we then just scraped so we weren't flushing them. The ammonium, again, for the concentration, this is not total, this is just the concentration. The November piles had very low ammonium concentration in the leachate. The January ones were the highest, and the March ones were somewhere in between. And when we took the volume by the concentration to get the total amount of milligrams of nitrogen lost per lysimeter, so it's just a tiny little area per lysimeter, our November ones were way low, had almost no nitrogen going through. The January ones were typically the worst, and the March ones followed and the no straw was always higher than the, the straw. When we looked at nitrate, and I know we shouldn't have probably a lot of nitrate coming off directly under those manure staging piles. One thing to point out, we had the lysimeters, the top of the lysimeters about six inches below the soil surface. So there was not a lot of time for it to interact with the soil. The nitrate, again, November was the lowest. January, especially for the no straw, was the highest. March, kind of in between. In this one, the concentration for the nitrate was higher in March. I'm not really sure why, it just was. And the total, there actually was a little bit of nitrogen lost through nitrate, but it's on this scale, it's, it's so tiny, they don't really show up. There's little teeny, teeny, tiny bars for November. And again, most of our nitrate was being lost through the no straw pile. So the straw is actually doing a really good job of hanging on to that nitrogen and a lot of the moisture, which is why we're not seeing as much liquid coming through. Dissolved phosphorus. Once again, January was the worst, followed by March, and November was 
typically the least. And just qu quite frankly, this really kind of surprised me. I really thought November would have more leachate. It's out there longer. It would have more chance for snow to be on it. We get rain later in the fall or snow and you'd have all of the snow melt going through it. I really thought our November ones would probably have more leachate than they did. It, it really surprised me quite a bit, which is why we continued it for f two more years. We wanted to see if that was continuous or not. And yes, it's all the way through. And so the best that I can figure is that it's the, the manure is drying out so much in that, even though it's colder, but it's drying out enough that it helps absorb a lot of that snow melt before it goes. And the total, when you multiply it by the volume, again, the no straw was the worst, and January was higher than March. And November was once again our best one. We also looked at the manure analyses. We did a lot of things. We did moisture, ammonium, nitrate, phosphorus, total N and total carbon. Um, the total nitrogen and carbon were based on the combustion analysis. I'm only going to present the manure total nitrogen. The rest were pretty boring or not, didn't really show a lot. Um, out of the total nitrogen, probably the one thing to really point out is that our January one, no straw, had one of the biggest drops in nitrogen, which would be expected. It was the one that had the most leachate and the most total N being lost that also showed up in the manure analysis that we were truly losing more of our nitrogen. Our soil analyses, we took our baseline and then we did, um, each fall as we removed it, we took soil samples and we did them by, down to a depth of three feet, but we broke them out by one foot, two foot, and three foot increments. We analyzed them for nitrate and phosphorus, again on the latchet. I'm just gonna present the soil nitrate here. Um, this is comparing the beginning the baseline 2013 to 2018. This is all on the same scale. And amazingly, we had much, much higher nitrate levels in our soil in 2013 than we did by 2018. And you're going, what could possibly be going on? We had to go look back at our cropping history. So this was a field that was being converted from a wheel line system, irrigated system, to a pivot system, and so we were in a corner of the field that was becoming a pivot corner. It had previously been in alfalfa, had been planted to a small grain crop right before we started this study, but I think what we're seeing in 2013 is still a whole lot of that nitrogen left over from the alfalfa crop that was being still there, being carried out. And by the time we got to 2018, that nitrogen was gone and we were obviously not adding a lot from our manure staging piles. I personally thought we would have added more than we did. All this really goes to show is that our manure staging piles are not really contributing a lot of nitrogen to our soil, which is great. That says that our, that's a decent practice and we're not con causing environmental impacts. But, I just want to keep yeah. you, but sure. are you placing manure at these sites every year? Every year. Every year. Mm -hmm. What time of year do you place? So, we did it at the end of November, end of January, end of March each year, and we would remove the, the manure either real late summer, or early fall, every year. So it'd sit there through the summer and then. And do the soils freeze under the, under the manure pot? Do you think? I would assume so, just probably. It, it gets cold enough, but, mm, but that I did not test for, to be real honest. We did not go dig into the piles and test for that. Um, the results, so basically, November, or sorry, five minutes, okay. Our November application was the, had the lowest amount of leachate, the lowest, lowest total amount of nitrogen that was lost. So, whereas I would have initially said, oh, you should probably haul manure out later in the season because you'd have less chance for that snow melt to be flushing the nutrients. This study shows that, no, we can, we're actually better off if we haul manure out there in, in the fall. So if you're especially tight on storage, Hauling it out there early before the winter seems to be perfectly fine and appropriate and will probably actually retain more of your nitrogen than if you haul it out there later, which was kind of contrary to what I would have guessed. But regardless, our manure staging piles don't seem to create any environmental issues. 
I do want to just compare this briefly to what our sludge study did, and I'm not, I'm not going to spend long. Basically, our sludge drying one had relatively little leachate. Those sealed off extremely quickly. We were putting the sludge out there in July. And this is from just the first three years where we could compare everything. But if you'll note, the amount of leachate volume for sludge was not was fairly low. November piles were lower, but straw in July even had a lot more leachate than the sludge did. That sludge really seemed to seal off very quickly and very little came through after that. And then again, our January ones were way higher. For ammonium, again, the same sludge was very, very low. January, no straw was one of the worst. And this is just the ammonium, but again, when you take the total amount by the volume, the sludge was releasing or losing very, very little nitrogen. Our January piles and March piles were actually losing a lot more nitrogen proportionally. And so sludge drying, at least from this study, shows that it's not likely to be an issue at all. It's actually better than some of our manure staging piles. What I would really like to do on this is now take it, this was on a silty um, clay loam soil. I would actually like to repeat the sludge drying portion compared to manure staging piles on more of a sandy loam soil, the other kind of the extreme end of the, what NRCS approves for the manure staging piles. And that's the end of that. Questions? Uh, quick question on the size of the manure that was stored in the pile. And secondly, the soil samples, were they taken from underneath the pile or from the edge of where the pile was? Okay, so the size of the piles were 40 foot by 40 foot with the three light, yeah, as high as we could get it. So they were higher, they were taller than me usually, typically. So we, we tried very hard to get those piled in there just as high as we could get those so that we could be getting a good amount of leachate. Um, the soil samples we took after we removed the, the manure from inside there, we tried to keep track so that we were going to different spots. And we would take it after we removed the manure in the fall, and then we would actually fill those holes with the slurry so that we weren't creating a preferential flow off of the other stuff. Any other questions? Why'd you wait till fall to remove the manure? Um, that was based on when the, the field crews wanted it. So okay. we're hauling it out to Cash Junction to one of our experiment station farms um, just because of the crops that they primarily grow. They're typically applying it after either corn silage or after a small grain. But not before. But not before. Yeah, they, they think it's too wet. <laughs> So just to confirm that, there'd be nothing growing on that plot <laughs> no. because you came back and put more manure on it right. in November. Right. There was nothing there's growing on it. There's no uptake if there was any. There's what? No uptake. No. <coughs> no. It's the, it, that was just a designated manure staging pile location. And the sludge was a dirt lagoon sludge? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you.